In this video, we are going to be calculating tide, times, and heights of non standard ports again. However, instead of looking at the non standard port of Tawantan or Mana Point, we're going to be looking at Snapper Creek or Tin Camp Bay. Okay, Snapper Creek is often referred to as Tin Camp Bay. Um, so, the first thing we need to do for Box A is fill out the place regarding the standard port of Tin Camp Bay or Snapper Creek. Now, the standard port for Tin Camp Bay or Snapper Creek is Bundaberg. And the date we've listed up here with regards to the tide that we're looking for on the 9th of the 2nd, 2017, which is today's date. What I then need to do is copy uh, the values from the tide timetables for that particular date into box A. So I'm simply going to copy these particular values across into box A. So I get 0107, 0730, 1356, 1951. Then my times and my heights are 0 0.57, 3.37, 0 0.70, and 2.79, like so. Box A, we've completed. Put a little tick next to it if it's going to show you that you're done. Box B is then just a matter of dealing with now a non standard port, which is our Tin Can Bay or Snapper Creek. So the place we can now put Tin Can Bay, Snapper Creek, like so. And the date is the 9th and the 2nd. 2017. We also need to fill in whether or not these tides up here started as high or low and we do that by noting what the next tide is. Now this one's higher than this one which means this is a high tide. So we've got low, high, low, high, L, H, L, H, which we denote like so. Once again, same for the bottom. And then it's just a matter of putting in the standard port times across the top, which we've got here, and the standard port heights across this, which we have here. So I'm going to go and do that. So we've got 01, 07, 0730, 1356, and 1951. We then need to put the average time distance differences, which we get from table two columns one and two, which for Tinkham Bay is a plus 44 for the high water and a minus 16 for the low. Because we've got a low, we've got a minus 16, and then a high, we've got to add 44. Minus 16, add 44. Now if we do this uh, calculation here, we get 0, 0, 5, 1. If we add these together, so we subtracted here, now we've got to add, we should get 7, 4, 0, 7. If I take this away from this, I should get 0, 4, 3, 1. And if I add these two together, I get 5, 9, 9. Oops, sorry, wrong box, so just quickly raise that. Sorry, we had nine five nine one. That's better. Now what we want to do is we want to know whether these times make sense. What I mean by that is if we get a value such that the minutes are greater than 60, then we have to convert it to hours. Okay, so this one here is actually fine because we've only got 51 minutes. But this one here where we've got 74, we have to take 60 minutes and convert that to an hour. So we'll get an extra hour and we're going to take 60 minutes from this, which is going to give us that. Now this here is fine, 13.40. That's about 1.40 in the afternoon. And 19.95, you know, that's bigger than 60. So I've got to take another hour across and that will give me 35 minutes remaining. We do the same with the heights 
Okay, it's like what we did with the times, except unlike uh, instead of times now, we're putting the heights across here. So I'm just going to copy those out. 057, 337, 070, and 279. The ratio from table 2, column 9, for Snapper Creek, column 9, if we scroll down to Tinkham Bay, our ratio is 0 0.8. Okay, this figure right here is 0 0.8. So we're going to have to multiply all of those values by 0 0.8. So we're going to, as I said, multiply 0, 8, 0, multiply 0, 8, 0, multiply 0, 8, 0, and multiply 0, 8, 0. You're best off using the calculator to do that um, to save you time. So in a calculator, 0.57 by 0 0.8 is 0 0.46. Okay, and then Five point eight is two point seven zero and point seven by point eight is zero point five six. Two point seven nine by point eight is two point two three. And the last piece of information I have to put underneath that line I just wrote is the adjustment from table two, column ten. So we go to get our last piece of data from column 10, which they call this cons, okay, or constant, and you'll note that for Tinkan Bay, fortunately, Snapper Creek, the constant is zero, which means we don't have to do anything to that figure. But to show that I've at least identified that adjustment, I'm going to write that it's zero. I know it's not going to change the answer, but it at least shows to me that you've identified where it is in the, gra uh, in the table of data, and then you can just simply... rewrite those values you previously calculated because if you add zero to those values it will do nothing to the outcome. Alright we've done B and we can move on to C. Now the height of the given time uh, the height of the tide at a given time we've said is eighteen hundred hours. Okay? So this is essentially we're looking for a height at six o'clock at night. Now this eighteen hundred we can put in several different places in this box so I'm going to just go ahead and start putting them in and you can put it in four different places okay so we've got our four 1800s okay one two three four and we can also fill in the place with regards to the non-standard port being in Bay or Snapper Creek so the date is the 09 02 2017, today's date, and we can start filling the rest of this stuff out. Now the nearest high water with regard to this time, if we go back up to these times and we try to figure out where this one would actually exist with regards to these, 6 o'clock at night would be somewhere between that high and that low you'd agree. If that's 1 and that's 8, that's about 2 and that's about 8.30, then 6 in the afternoon, six at night, six in the evening, along between there. So the nearest high water is going to be this one, okay, which occurs at 23.35. So 23, oh sorry, 20.35. Now that five minutes is not a big amount. Why I'm suggesting that that's not a big amount is because we can look at this as 20.30, okay, because it is an approximate. So the difference between 1800 and 2000 is gonna be two hours approximately. Okay, which is why I put a little underline there. I don't want to waste too much time in figuring this out. If it's approximately, then just write it as an approximate. The nearest high water, okay, now the nearest high water we said is this one here. And the nearest high water with regards to the height of the nearest high water, so nearest high water in metres, is 2.23. So we simply put 2.23 for our nearest high, and our nearest low is this one, 0.56. Now the range represents the difference between the two. So if we take 0.56 from 2.23, we get 1.67, which is our range. The height of the low water 
we just suggested is 0 0.56, so we can put this value as 0 0.56, and we then just simply need to read our height from graph one or two. So we graph one, and if we pull that graph out, we'll note, before I pull it out, I should say, these two pieces of information which I've calculated for the range and the approximate hourly interval are the critical pieces of information in determining this value for the graph. So on the x-axis, we're going to mark 2. So here's our graph. Here's 2. Here's 2. Okay, Plus or minus, it does not matter. And we're going to note our range is 1.67, which is going to belong somewhere between the 1.5-metre uh, range curve and the 2-metre range curve. So 1.67, if you were to draw this in, you might agree that it might come up and look something like this. Now this is an approximation, okay, so everyone's realistically going to have different values, but if that was the 1.67 range curve, then I'll simply match this point to where it intersects, or this point to where it intersects, and I read the corresponding value off the side of the x, which is approximately midway between 1.2 and 1.4, which to me suggests about 1.3. So 1.30. What we then need to do is add these things together. And we get our height for the tide at a given time, 6 o'clock. So the height of the tide at 6 o'clock, or 6 p.m., 6 in the evening, is 1.86 metres or thereabouts.